Uh, wala po kayong rekomendasyon sa kumiting ito na baguhin na lang po na para para siguradong sigurado na tayo kasi may provisions pa ako na encounter yung sa initiative there is such a thing as direct initiative and indirect initiative so hindi pa mas maganda ang klaruhin na lang ng panibagong batas ito para once and for all uh, the, the law will set the appropriate standards on how COMELEC should act issue the appropriate resolution, wala na ho tayong gulo. Kasi akit na naman po ito sa Supreme Court. Sasabihin ng Supreme Court, well, mawalang galang na uh, si K. Justice Ascuna, professor ko po ito, akit na naman sa Supreme Court. Sasabihin na naman ng Supreme Court, sinabi ko na sa inyo na ganito ito, uh, hindi na tayo matatapos dito. Maganda pong suggestion talaga po kung magkakaroon ng pagbabago sa batas para maklarify na ang lahat. It should not be the COMELEC that should be clarifying anything. Our IRR should not be there to correct whatever mistakes, if there are, doon sa batas. Hindi po yun ang role ng implementing rules and regulation. Ang dapat so what po is yung happening ay right now, uh, Mr. Chairman, is that the COMELEC will be correcting its previous IRR. And the previous IRR was made to supplant some loopholes found in RA 6735. So baguhin na lang natin 6735, tapos issue ng, or uh, perhaps the Congress can make a, a very tight law na hindi na kailangan ng IR. Kaya ko po sinasabi ito, uh, Madam Chair, napakarami na pong uh, pangyayari na yung IRR, iniba yung batas. Uh, meron po akong encounter doon na wala na dito yung mga Diptiga Department of Health, yung Senator Milk Paul? Code of the Philippines, binago nila. So, so follow up lang ako yes, yes. sa sinabi ninyo, okay lang. For all our legal luminaries, uh, the justices who are here, perhaps you can help us. Perhaps the reason why COMELEC Resolution 10650 is so defective is because the law nga that is trying to implement it, RA6735, is insufficient to cover the PI as conceived in the constitutional amendment. Could this be the case? Because in the decision of Lambino versus COMELEC, I believe the ponente being here, the Supreme Court categorically declined to revisit the Santiago ruling. Assuming for a moment that no motions for reconsideration were filed in Labino, would you agree, uh, Chairman Garcia, that the Santiago ruling remains valid because you have given interviews uh, stating the contrary? Madam Chair, Your Honors, this is a personal opinion as a former dean of the College of Law and a former law professor. It will not mind the entire commission uh, because it's being asked of me. With the kind uh, indulgence of, the, of everybody, if we are going to, to read the, the case of Santiago versus Comerick, indeed, the voting was 8-6 in favor of insufficiency. However, Madam Chair, Your Honors, if you are going to read the motion for reconsideration, there was a sudden turnaround. It was a 6-6 voting, Madam Chair, Your Honors. In that 6-6 uh, voting, Justice Hermosissima reversed himself and sided with the five who voted uh, to declare 6735 as sufficient. And Justice Vitug refused to uh, resolve Republic Act 6735 on its insufficiency or sufficiency. One justice inhibited himself, and the other justice said it's premature. That's why the voting after the motion for reconsideration. But Chairman, the reality is, in its resolution of November 21, 2006, the Supreme Court dismissed all the MRs. Even if there was a sentence in that resolution saying that 10 members reiterated their position as shown by their various opinions, the decision is upheld as sufficient and adequate to amend through a people's initiative. Are you saying that this single sentence reverses the Santiago ruling? Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, let him uh, answer, please. Uh, Madam Chairman Chair, Garcia, your please. honors, uh, a, a reading of the dissenting opinion of Justice Panganiban, of Justice, uh, um, Justice uh, Reynato Puno would reveal that what was, uh, what was uh, mentioned in the decision as to be having an injunction, a permanent injunction, is the Delphine petition. It is never intended by the court to be a, a prohibition in future cases. Uh, for purposes of the determination of the applicability yes, of 67 Yes, I don't think that's the question we're asking. Um, it's very clear from the statement that the separate opinions of the 10 justices already mentioned 
had promulgated their opinions as early as October, before the MRs in November. Upon the resolution of the MR, the 10 justices merely reiterated what they had already said. So if the separate opinions of October 25, Lambino Ponencia, were not enough to overturn Santiago, how can the mere reiteration of these same opinions in November 21 suddenly overturn the entire Santiago doctrine? Madam Are Chair. Uh, yes. If I may, Madam Chair, just to add to the response of the good chairman to the chair's question, may, maybe the chair could also ask Justice Carpio to weigh in on this question. Yes, Yaman I was up, going chair. to allow uh, Chairman Garcia, and then after that, of course, the uh, uh, very enlightened and personal knowledge of uh, Justice Carpio. Yes, Chairman Garcia. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. As far as the, because we are talking now of the Lambino versus Comelec decision, indeed, there was never, there, there was, the, the Supreme Court said that they are not uh, at uh, liberty at that time to depart from the ruling in the case of Santiago versus Comelec. But however, again, it's a subject to an uh, interpretation in the motion for reconsideration. There was this one paragraph which says that 10 justices of the Supreme Court are, are of the opinion that Republic of 6735 is uh, sufficient. With the permission of the good chairperson. But and, uh, as still have the floor, as, as, as just on this point, um, um, Senator Trentino. But as lawyers, too, um, Chairman Garcia, again, you're expressing your personal opinion and not in any way binding um, the commission. It is clearly obiter because it was not needed to dispose of the case. The case was already disposed of. That statement had nothing to do with the disposition of the case um, on the merits. Now. I will not bind you to an answer, but a lawyer can interpret that too, in that manner. That although that statement was made in the minute resolution of um, Lambino, that is obitor in so far as the main case, which the court disposed of already, as Senator Marcus said, um, all of the cases and petitions were um, dismissed. It would be fair to interpret it that way as well. Would that be a fair statement? Coming from a very respected legal luminary such as the Honorable Senator, we will definitely respect such a position. But Thank of course, that will be the subject of a future litigation again in the Supreme Court. That's why, again, perhaps it's the best time that this uh, legal issue be resolved with finality by the Honorable Supreme Court. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, with the indulgence of um, Senator Tolentino. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Senator Tolentino, would you like to invite Justice Carpio yes, uh, at this point? Justice Carpio can, can join us. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, Your Honors. Uh, if you look at uh, the main decision in Lambino, you have to look at the dispositive portion. The dispositive portion, which is the binding portion, says the petitions are dismissed. And then in the motion for recon, it's, uh, the, uh, the resolution of the court says the, uh, the, the this, the MR is denied with finality. So there is no reversal of Santiago because you have to look at the dispositive portion. That is the, the portion that binds everybody. So the statement in the MR that uh, 10 justices maintain their position is just a statement uh, uh, of what this 10 justices said, which was already ruled in the main decision. So uh, the dispositive portion should prevail. And there is nothing in the dispositive portion that reverse Santiago. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the very simple and uh, truly enlightening uh, clarification, Justice Carpio. I know that you had a previous engagement and you made a real effort to join us, so thank you for your participation. It's been most enlightening and clarifies that, in fact, Lambino does not um, uh, repeal or change uh, the Santiago ruling. Thank you. Senator Tolentino, please. No further questions, uh, Madam Chair, perhaps uh, the next step for this Congress to do is amend Republic Act 6735, yeah. and then the Commission elections to issue appropriate resolutions to implement the amended law. Unless uh, Justice 
as kuna would want to say something. Wala na po akong itatanong, Madam Chair. Salamat. Maraming maraming salamat, uh, Senator Toll. And uh, we'd like to call on Justice Ascuna, who's waited patiently from uh, early this morning. If uh, Senator Cheese will allow uh, the justices to please first uh, take the floor. Thank you, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in connection with the Lambino versus Comelec, I was one of the justices who voted in that case. Uh, I was one of those who, one of the 10, whose opinion was that Republic Act 6735 was sufficient to support an initiative to amend the Constitution. But uh, the ruling was that uh, there was no need to uh, examine whether or not uh, the Santiago ruling should be reviewed because in that Lambino case, it was very clear that the proposal was a revision, and therefore it cannot be done by initiative. So the ruling was a petition denied because it's one for re revision. In the motion for reconsideration, it is true that there's uh, the last paragraph that says that the 10 justices maintained their position that the, the law, Republic Act 6735, is sufficient. However, I believe that although I was one of the 10, I believe that that is not a binding uh, statement. It merely reiterated our obiter dictum, our academic opinion, what is not part of the ruling because uh, as the main decision said, it is not necessary to go into that. That is what Justice Holmes called economy of jurisprudence. You decide only what has to be decided. You reserve for future cases what needs to be decided so that it will not bind future Supreme Court. That is economy of jurisprudence. So I respect that. Uh, furthermore, uh, uh, Madam Chair, if we had uh, reverse our position and, uh, and reverse Santiago, the disposable portion would have granted, partly granted the petition, not denied completely. It would have said, wherefore the petition is partly granted to the extent that Santiago versus Comelec is reversed. Uh, but, but the petition is denied because it is for revision. But we didn't do that. We denied the petition completely. So that means we did not go into the uh, review of Santiago versus Comelec. The same with the motion for reconsideration. It was the disposable portion said all the motions for reconsiderations are hereby denied. Otherwise, it would have said partly granted by reversing Santiago versus Comelec. We did not. So as Justice Carpio said, it's the disposable portion that counts. And uh, the disposable portion in the Lambino case very clearly did not reverse or even touch upon Santiago versus Comelec. And therefore, I believe it still stands. Moreover, Madam Chair, the deficiencies pointed out by Chief Justice Davide in Republic Act 6735 in the Santiago versus Comelec case is that it is insufficient, inadequate, and uh, incomplete. Why? Because it does not state what the petition should contain whereas it states what the petition to make an ordinary law should contain, it does not state what a petition to amend the Constitution should state. Moreover, it says that the change shall be effective upon publication uh, in the official gazette, whereas in the case of uh, an amendment of the Constitution, it is effective upon the plebiscite, approval in the plebiscite. So it is uh, incomplete. There's no... There's no provision on the effectivity of the chains. There's no provision on the content of the petition. Now, can the COM-elect supply that deficiency? It, I respectfully submit, Madam Chair, that the COM-elect cannot supply that uh, deficiency. There has to be a law. Why? Because the Constitution says that Congress shall pass a law to implement this initiative. That's in Article 17. Congress is the one mandated to pass the law. And there is a principle in constitutional law called potestas delegata delegare non potes. 
where the Constitution has put the power, it shall remain there. It cannot be transferred elsewhere. And so therefore, the COMELEC cannot do it. Moreover, under the provision of the Constitution on the COMELEC, the powers given to the COMELEC is to enforce and administer the law, not to complete it, not to perfect it, not to supply deficiencies, enforce and administer. So if it is incomplete, imperfect, inadequate, you cannot enforce it, you cannot administer it. There is a need for Congress to pass a law that is adequate, complete, and sufficient. In fact, there is a pending resolution of the pending bill in the Senate for that. Senator Coco Pimentel has a pending bill to correct the deficiencies of Republic Act 6735. I think that should be the case. Thank, Thank you very you much, very much uh, Justice Ascuna. And uh, assuming, without conceding that RA 6735, I think perhaps you are the right person to ask, um, assuming that this is in fact sufficient for uh, argument to implement the um, constitutional provision on uh, people's initiative, you made mention and distinguished between a mere amendment and a revision. I would like to ask you uh, your opinion based on the signature sheets that have been passed around. What is being proposed in Section 1, Paragraph 1 of Article 7 of the Constitution is a change in voting jointly at the call of the Senate President or the Speaker of the House. Do we then consider that this is a, uh, an amendment or a revision of the uh, structure of government and bicameralism? Madam Chair, uh, <clears throat> in my personal opinion, the proposal, proposed initiative now, is uh, not a mere amendment, but a revision, because it affects Article 6 of the Constitution, not just Article 17, because it changes the nature of the legislative body from a bicameral one to a unicameral, in effect, because by voting jointly, the Senate and the House uh, will become, in effect, a unicameral body. There is another provision in the existing Constitution which provides where Congress may vote jointly. That is during uh, imposition of martial law. But that is in the existing provision. That was not introduced by initiative. Uh, if you want to change the voting, it has to be done by constitu constituent assembly, not by initiative. And constituent assembly, you need the Senate to participate. That's why it cannot be done. So that's, a, <laughs> that's the problem. The problem I was testifying before, before the House of Representatives, their problem, Madam Chair, is Paano naman kami? Approve na namin ito, ngunit ayaw ng Senado. I told them, well, you can't do anything because it has to be both of you. Now, if this is approved, assuming it's uh, all right and it's approved by our people, and so now Article 17 will read that uh, one of the ways of proposing amendments or even revisions to the Constitution is uh, by a vote of Congress by three-fourths of all its members voting jointly, okay? Does that mean that the Senate is out of the picture? I don't think so, because it says Congress, and Congress means Senate and House, and therefore, you need at least 12 plus one senators to vote with the, with the lower house for it to be a valid act of Congress. Because if there is no majority vote of the Senate in that Let's say you have 315 uh, representatives and 24 senators. You have 339 in all. And three-fourths of that is 254. Of the 254, 13 has to be senators. Otherwise, it's not an act of Congress because it's not an act of the Senate. And Congress is Senate and House. So even if we vote jointly, it has to be jointly for, with Senate and the House voting together. And if the Senate is not present, let's say there's no quorum on the part of the Senate, then even if the 315 congressmen vote in favor, it does not amend, propose an amendment because it's not Congress. 
It has to be both Senate and the House acting together, even if outvoted KO, but there has to be a participation of the Senate, and that means at least a majority vote of the Senate. You can even change your rules, Madam President, Madam Chair. Your rules state that your quorum is majority plus one, or one half plus one. You should change that, that to say that if the matter being considered is a proposal to amend the Constitution, the quorum is three-fourths of the Senate. And if it is a matter of calling a constitutional convention, it is two-thirds of the Senate. And that's your quorum. So if none of you will attend the so-called call by the House speaker, imagine the speaker can call both the Senate and the House under the amendment. Supposing none of you will show up or less than the quorum, they cannot proceed because there is no quorum. Now, if they cannot proceed, they'll order the arrest. The speaker will order the arrest of a senator. Is that possible? So that is the problem, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you so much, Justice Ashkuna. And certainly in Lambino versus Comelec, the court stated that altering the principle of separation of powers or the system of checks and balances amounts to a revision, an entire revision that is not a mere amendment. I'd like to hear from the Comelec. Do you agree with this? Do the other legal experts like Dean uh, Jokno and the rest agree with this? Madam yes, Chair, Comelec, uh, your, please. your honors, uh, with all due respect, this, that's premature at this point. On the part of the commission, there being no petition yet uh, before the Comelec, and we do not want to preempt the action of the commission. It's just uh, sufficient that we are listening uh, intently on the, uh, the statement and the opinion of uh, Mr. Justice Ascuna and Justice Carpio. Um, I completely understand and respect the position taken by the good chair, given that this might be ripe for their own adjudication at the proper time, and it would be premature to ask for his opinion on the matter. Suffice it to say that the lecture given by our distinguished former justices and chief justice of the Supreme Court would more than suffice, especially given the fact that I will qualify them as to their expertise. Not only were they part of the Lambino case, but not only were they part of the Supreme Court that decided at that time, the ponente is Chief Justice Carpio um, himself. Kumbaga sa pagtitingnan niyo yung intent ng Kongreso sa mga batas na ginagawa namin, parang ito na rin yung intent ng Korte Suprema. Kumbaga, nung yung decision ay binaba at... Um, at uh, ginawad patungkol sa petition ng um, Lambino case. May I just ask one question to the distinguished um, Comelec chairman for his consideration and for the Comelec's consideration, Madam Chair? Yes, please proceed. But bit. in the meantime, of course, we also recognize that Justice Ascuna, in addition to his participation in the Supreme Court, was one of the framers of both the 1973 Constitution as well as the 1987 Constitution. And we are fortunate also to have the presence of Justice Scorpio, the uh, actual ponente of the Lambino case. Yes, please proceed, Senator uh, Chis. Now, um, may I confirm, um, Chairman Garcia, Comelec is an independent constitutional body, right? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor, yes, that's true. So, as such, you have fiscal autonomy. Would that be correct? That is correct, uh, Madam Chair. As such, you are given by the power under the Constitution to realign funds within um, the complex budget. Would that be correct? That is correct, Madam Chair. Now, given that your original budget proposal to um, the DBM, when you were um, submitted to uh, ask to submit a budget proposal uh, during the budget call was 43.716 billion and the DBM only gave you 27.103 billion, there is a differential that you would have wanted to, um, wanted to utilize for purposes of performing your functions as a constitutional body. Would that be correct? That is correct, uh, Madam Chair, 17.4 billion. Now, specifically, you propose 2.57 billion for the conduct of supervision of elections, referenda, recall votes, and plebiscites. Would that be correct? You uh, propose that? 2.5 million, yes, Madam Chair. And then all of a sudden, the BICAM recommended 14 billion, which actually increased it by 12 billion. Would that be correct? 12 billion for the conduct of recall initiative, referendum, and other election preparation, and 1 billion for the preparatory national and local elections. Yes. And yet you had other submissions for capital outlay, 
and for PS that were not granted. That's right, ma Madam Chair. Um, so, as you stated earlier, now that um, for um, the information of um, everyone, given that it was stated by Senate President Zubiri, now that the President has taken a position against um, People's Initiative, um, and that and um, you are reviewing the rules of Comelec with respect to uh, the supposed um, law of 6735, would there be a possibility that the Comelec will revisit um, the 14 billion item in your budget, realign it for the purpose of spending it on what you really need, on um, capital outlay and PS, that is the creation of positions, which is well within your power to do so. Would that be correct? Madam Chair, you understand this is for the record. Even before the end bank had voted yesterday to suspend any and all proceedings, including the, uh, the uh, effectivity of uh, our Comelec Resolution 10650, we already had in our mind the, the items by which this uh, 13 billion pesos is to be spent. And definitely all of these items, which this representation is willing to submit to, the, to this committee does not pertain to any people's initiative or uh, any uh, plebiscite in relation thereto. Can you submit, Mr. Chair, um, once it is done, the realignment of COMELEC insofar as these allocations are concerned? Again, given that COMELEC as an independent constitutional body can realign from within your agency, given the direction given by the President as well, and how things are running. Yes, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Your Honours, we will do that. In fact, uh, we will uh, return to the items uh, which were reduced in, uh, as far as the amount is concerned. Ibabalik po namin lahat, yung lahat ng nawala sa amin. Kindly inform us when this is done, Mr. Chairman? Definitely, Madam Chair, Your Honours. Now, Thank you very on much. the resolution to suspend um, further consideration of this people's initiative, the ground given was that you would review your rules. Would that be correct? That is correct, uh, Madam Chair, Your Honours. Um, for the information of the good Comelec Chair, there are several petitioners, including the Senate, who are planning to um, seek a clarificatory ruling, as may be necessary from the Supreme Court, because as stated by Justice Azguna, how can you come up with rules for a law that is inadequate and insufficient? Although I, I acknowledge the fact that these rules were issued prior to your term as Chairman of the Commission on Elections. That's right, uh, Mr. Chair. Madam Chair, Your Honours, but uh, uh, the suspension of our rules does not preclude anybody going to the higher court to question the same rule that we suspended. Again, just informing the good chairman that there are such plans um, to go up before the Supreme Court to precisely question that, and perhaps this would be considered as a um, condition precedent, um, given a pendency of a case should that time arise this week or next week, for the COMELEC to be more prudent in um, issuing new ones until, if at all, those cases are resolved when the time should come. Def definitely, Madam Chair, Your Honours, we will seriously consider the suggestion of the good uh, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Madam Chair. Madam Chair Thank yes. you very much. Senator Tolentino, please. There's a manifestation. And of thereafter, Senator Risa, is that correct? Thank you. There's a manifestation of gratitude. I'd like to thank uh, Justice Escarpio and Escuna for clarifying all of this as a constitutional law junkie. I think, Madam Chair, uh, I think we have to really, really assert uh, the Senate's right to implement Article 6, Section 16 of the Constitution, which refers to, and I quote, each house shall determine the rules of its proceedings. And this has been affirmed several times with the Supreme Court itself. Maraming salamat po sa dalawa po nating ginagalang na maestrado.